1. A bit of backstory. I grew up in a rural part of Ireland with only two neighbours. I lived on my great-grandparents' old small farm and had renovated the old barn into a garage for my dad to work as a mechanic. My closest neighbour was my dad's aunt-in-law, who never really bothered us. But our other neighbour, we let them use our lane as an easy access point to their house and farm, even though the other lane going down to theirs was a much shorter method, but a tight road for a milk tanker and a silage harvester. I had a large extended family, 14 or so cousins, who were always at my house hanging out. Two of my cousins who I was really close with, the older one, Mick, and the younger one, Jim, befriended the neighbor's middle child, George. As his family was always looking up to my dad to fix something, and George was always tagging along. We had so much fun together as kids, but everything got so much weirder as we grew up. George was about 14 when this started to happen. One day, when I was about 16 years of age, the neighbors needed their jeep fixed, and when George was dropping it off for his dad, he had realized that my parents weren't home. I noticed the back door was unlocked, so instead of knocking and calling our names, he walked into the house and up the stairs to my bedroom where I was sleeping, opened my door and just stared at me while saying my name very quietly. I woke up confused as to what was going on. My family were loud and rambunctious, so someone quietly saying my name was definitely not normal. I asked what the fuck he was doing here, and his excuse was, No one was downstairs, and I heard voices upstairs. The voices was my TV playing as I fell asleep. I passed it off as nothing and got him out of the house ASAP. Thankfully, I was dressed so I wasn't freaking out about him seeing me. When he left, I went down to my sister's room on the bottom floor and asked her if she had heard George knock or come in. She was sitting there doing schoolwork and didn't hear a sound, just the jeep driving up which is normal for my dad's family to use the garage. They all had keys to it as it was where the farming machinery was kept when not needed so she thought nothing of it. Another incident involving George was when my cousins, Mick and Jim, had invited him to come hang with us and play some video games. Everything was fine that day until later in the evening when Mick went to the bathroom, and two minutes later George disappeared after him. Not long later, Mick came back and I asked if he'd seen George, he hadn't. Then I heard the floorboards creak from my bedroom, and as no one else was upstairs, I was confused and went up to see when I found George in my closet snipping through my stuff. I grabbed him by the collar and pulled him out of my room. I was furious as no one was allowed into my room. I was a 17-year-old, 5 foot nothing noodle of a girl that had Asperger's syndrome and a bad mental health record. So to me, my room was my sanctuary. His excuse again was, I was looking for Mick and I thought he was up here. I was at this point screaming at him to never come near me or my room again and about how creepy this all was. All the while he kept laughing like it was a joke, and for me it wasn't. He was refusing to leave, so I did the only thing my dumb brain could think of doing, which was to put him on his ass and drag him out myself. But whatever way I swiped his feet, he fell onto his ass and slid down the stairs, which, as this boy was at least six foot tall and weighed twice as much as me, astounded my cousins and parents who all came running to the bottom of the stairs and found him starting to cry. My family were extremely confused but stayed calm and asked us both what happened. Surprisingly, he told them what he had told me and never made me out to be the bad guy. When I came downstairs about five minutes later after a small cry, my family asked for my recall of the events and never punished me but asked George never to come to this house again without my dad's knowledge. And if he does, we will not let them use our lane anymore as legally they had no right to use it. George never stepped foot in the house again, but would always speed down our road in anything he was on, whether it was a tractor or jeep, etc. He even ran over our dog in his quad, ATV for the Americans. I had a lot of younger family members over all the time. We did think about putting up a gate, but the road and the huge street was too wide unless we cemented into a post in the middle of the road, but he didn't care. He would purposely drive the tractor past our lane at 2 or 3 a.m., turning at the top of our lane. Instead, we put a cattle guard at the point where our lane meets their land. That made no difference, so my dad now has to park a vehicle, which is nearly always his transit van in the middle, so they purposely have to slow down to go around it. This all happened four years ago, and I've barely seen him since, but I've moved out and into my own place with my boyfriend, who happened to go to school with George. 
My boyfriend was a few years older, but George was the same age and in the same class as my boyfriend's younger brother. I had heard from them that when George was 17, he was FaceTiming an 8-year-old girl and was touching himself while talking to her. The young girl's mother walks in and sees what he's doing and files a police report, put it on Facebook. Photos of the interaction he had and all. He is now, from what I heard, on probation and has an ankle tag. What a creep. Let's never meet again. 2. This happened three years ago. Backstory. I, at the time 21, female, am a university student. I live on campus, but my parents live in the same town as me. My little sister, 15 at the time, also lived with my parents and attends a high school in the area. I'd usually spend my weekends at home. My country has an astronomical crime rate, especially when it comes to abductions and human trafficking. That being said, our town was considered one of the safer towns in my country. So over the weekends, usually Saturdays, LS and I would take a stroll to our nearby grocery store, buy some snacks, and chill out in the park close by. Well, one Saturday after buying ice cream and snacks, we made our way to the park. The neighborhood was really quiet because it was holiday season. We approached the swings when a strange man, SM, approached us. As soon as he spoke, I realized he was a foreigner. He had an uncanny, strange English accent. Almost as if he was trying too hard, and he was wearing really fancy clothes. It looked like he was heading to church or something. He introduced himself and said that he was working for an old lady that lives nearby. Apparently, she makes clothes for one of the primary schools in the area, and she needs help with folding the clothes and packing it away. He said that she specifically asked for young girls because she doesn't trust boys and that she's willing to pay $25 for 45 minutes of work. I converted the amount. I knew something was up. I'm not sure what $25 is for Americans, but for a young girl from my country, France, is quite a lot. You can have a solid day out in the mall with that. I thanked him for his generous offer, but declined. I said that we have to go home because my mom's waiting and she'll be worried if we're not back in time. I grabbed my sister's hand and wanted to scatter, but he stopped me and shoved a pamphlet in my hand. I looked at it, and it was an advertisement for the job he had just told us about, with the amount we'll be paid obnoxiously plastered all over it. But there wasn't an address or contact details on it, just a lengthy paragraph highlighting the requirements, young girls. I noticed he was carrying an entire batch of these, and it made me question his intentions more. I told him again, thank you, but we're not interested, we need to go home now. My senses started tinkling and my mind started racing. I knew we were in big trouble and I had to get LS out of this situation. I looked around to see if I could find another adult that could help us out, but our streets were empty. I had to stay calm, I considered being more aggressive, but I didn't know if he was armed and I didn't want to risk my or LS's safety. He was quite large and could overpower us both. Just as we were about to leave, another lady conveniently appeared out of nowhere. She looked a lot older than me. I was initially relieved. But he started selling her the same BS, and she ate it up. She sounded very interested, almost over-eager. She looked at me and LS and said, Doesn't this sound like easy money? But before I could answer, the man said, You don't have to be afraid of me. I promise there's nothing to be afraid of. The old lady lives nearby, over there, actually. And he pointed at a house diagonally across from where we were standing. He's very kind, let's go talk to her. So you can see that I'm not lying. I froze, I'm not sure why. We walked across the street. It was only a couple of steps, but it felt like forever. I'm not sure why I walked with him, but I remember it feeling mechanical. Like my mind not being able to process what's happening. We stopped at the gate and the man said, Now this lady is very strict when it comes to safety. Before we go in, I need to know how much cash you're carrying. I need to take your cell phones for the moment. She really dislikes technology. And if you're carrying any weapons, I need to take those too, for safety reasons. My blood turned cold. I looked at the lady as she handed over her wallet and her cell phone. She smiled and said, I'm not carrying any weapons. I was astonished at how she's able to trust him. He looked at me and my LS, whom I practically pushed behind me by now, and said, Your turn now. I started slowly stepping back, smiled and said, Sorry, our dad is a local police officer. 
And if we're not home in ten minutes, our parents will go crazy. Especially my dad, he's very protective. The man's demeanor changed in an instant. Oh, your dad works for the police. I was walking backwards, saying yes, he used to be in the army, but he retired. And then the police recruited him because he's really good at his work. As soon as we were a safe distance from them, I turned around and rushed home. I was shaking so bad. I tried taking out my phone and calling my mom, but I couldn't because I was shaking. I made the part up about my dad being a local police officer. He's an ex-cop, but I had to do something. I looked back and saw him and the lady speed walk into the town's direction, away from the old lady's house. We got home and I told my mother I started crying, and LS too. She called my dad and he was there within the minute. My dad wanted to find this man and get a good look at him to see if anything stands out. We sifted through our neighborhood, but we couldn't find them. We called the police to file a report, but they couldn't do anything because SM didn't do anything illegal. Fast forward a couple of months and abductions in our town suddenly skyrocketed. I don't know if it's related to our encounter, but it's still weird and unfortunate. I initially felt bad about leaving the other lady there, but looking back, I'm wondering if she wasn't an accomplice in this. The way she just handed him her wallet and cell phone. And then they walked away from the old lady's house despite her looking very eager to get the job. Why didn't they go in? Anyways, thanks if you've come this far. Three. I'm working in a carousel in a shopping mall. And this mall is known for being like the third biggest mall in Europe, so yeah. Anyway. The first time I worked there, because the carousel is owned by my parents, so when I had free time, I'd go here and work for a few hours, like after school, etc. I was 13, and was not really used to the Parisian life. I came from a small town in the south, so it was really weird for me to be here. But one day a guy, maybe between 20 and 30, was sitting on a bench and looking at me. He seemed really nice, and I first thought that he was a parent or something, looking at his child. But he was completely alone, and only looking at me. I awkwardly smiled and said hello, thinking he needed some help. He kept smiling, and that's where I started to get scared. But I kept doing my work, looking at another bench to make him understand that I was uncomfortable. And maybe five minutes later he moved, sitting on the bench that I was looking at. He was not really smiling, and he looked kind of disappointed. So I started looking up because people could look at the carousel from there. When I looked down again, like ten minutes later, the guy was gone. I thought, he left. But he was still looking at me from the first floor with that fucking smile. He stood there for an hour and continued changing, so I could notice him. When I left work, he followed me, so I told my co-worker to accompany me until I got home. That was really creepy. He came back in random days, and it has been maybe six months since he ever came back. Last year I had a pause and decided to go to the nearest bookshop, as I always did, and I found a book that I liked, some Tolkien book, I don't even remember which one, but it was a really beautiful book. And a guy, maybe 15 or 16, looked at me and made a Tolkien reference. I laughed and just left, you know. Twenty minutes later the same guy was on a bench next to the carousel and looked at me. I smiled and he came to see me and asked for my number. I said I couldn't give my number to strangers, but he insisted. I then asked him his name, and told him that I'd text him when I'd be done with my work. I never texted him. I came back like two days after, but I didn't see him. I noticed him following me when I was in the same bookshop. I was moving randomly to see if he really was following me, and he was. So I walked towards him, and asked why he kept doing this. He said that he was in love with me, that I reminded him of his ex-girlfriend, and really wanted to know me. I said that I was in a relationship, he said that it was okay, he could be a third wheel. So I said I will text him whenever I feel like it, and he left. Maybe a month after that, I was going to a famous convention where I was cosplaying as a random maid. I was holding a free hugs cardboard with some random drawings on it. I was with two friends and we were having a lot of fun when out of nowhere, someone jumped on me and hugged me. It was this dude we called the security and he kept screaming like hell that I was the love of his life and that he would kill himself. Apparently he asked my co-worker why I wasn't here and she thought he was a friend of mine and said that I was going to a convention. 
He came and searched for me all the time. I never saw him after that. Also, he had my number because my co-worker gave it to him, and I blocked him, of course. Thirdly, it was during December 2018. So I had two jobs, but in the same shopping mall. A guy, again maybe 20 or 30 years old, with long hair, was sitting on a bench next to the carousel and kept looking at me. He sat there all day. And I noticed that sometimes he would raise his phone and move the phone in my direction, as if he was taking pictures of or filming me. I was 15, by the way, so he wasn't supposed to take pictures of young people. Plus, the way that he looked at me was really weird. And I even caught him licking his lips while looking at me. I felt really uncomfortable, but kept on working and didn't say anything. The next day, I was working my other job. Which was another carousel, actually. It was just here for the Christmas holidays, you know. And I didn't see him, but when I left my job, I was waiting for my parents to get ready so we could leave. This guy sat next to me, like, really close, and asked my number. I said no, and he looked down, like, disappointed, and asked, Are you working tomorrow? I replied, I don't know, why's that? Because I like your body. He stood up and left. I was paralyzed, really. And the next day, I told my co-worker Lionel, a different co-worker, by the way, he was a Romanian guy, about what happened. I couldn't sleep that night and was really paranoid about everything around me. Then I saw the guy and told Lionel to ask him to stop following me like that. He came back with a huge smile saying, I'm really not kidding by the way, it's okay, you two will go on a date. Apparently the guy had told my coworker that he was a friend of mine and was messing with me. He said he was really shy and was playing this game so he would have the confidence to ask me on a date. I was feeling so strange as if I was going to fall or something. I stopped working that afternoon and told my parents. They told me to stay with them and to immediately tell if I saw this guy. When we were leaving, I swear I saw the guy with a hoodie under the rain looking at me and taking pictures of the car. The next day, I was with another co-worker, Marie. She's really protective, by the way. She's like a sister to me. And I saw the guy on the bench next to the carousel. When I told her, she ran towards him and yelled at him stuff that I couldn't hear. But I could see the guy's face and it was priceless. She came back with a big smile and the guy left. Apparently, she said that she knows where he lives. And if she saw him around me for a second, she would blow his brains out. I never saw that guy again. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Three True Scary Stories. Episode Three Monkeys and a Badger. What? Uh, 488. I'm not forgetful, I, I know what I'm doing. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Right. What date has it, by the way? Come on. This will be Monday the 13th. This will go up, okay. Uh, uh, good news, everyone. I was checking the thing today, the, pe the people that are selling the TV I want, and they finally put it down to a price I'm willing to pay for it. That means my savings are going to take a bit of a knock, because I've got that, then I've got, ooh, I've got those taxes to pay, middle of the year. Uh, but I need a new TV, so I'm going to get this one. I'm just waiting till later, uh, cause, so I can, get a, I can get a proper delivery slot, because it seems to be that if you order late at night, uh, you only get, like, all-day delivery, which is free, but it's for a few days later, whereas I want to actually get it a bit sooner and pick a delivery slot. So I know if I wait later until later, later when I wake up, I think probably near or during those store's opening hours, uh, they'll have more slots available. So I'll do that, and hopefully I get it by the weekend so I can spend Saturday playing with the settings on my new television. I also uh, got some... I got my Doom Patrol Blu-ray. Uh, came through the came through the door a few days ago. It's currently sitting in a corner of my living room in what we will refer to as quarantine, because I'm not touching the bloody thing until I'm sure it's safe to do so. It'll get wiped down when I open it anyway. So hopefully that could be the first thing I watch on my new television. Should be safe to open by Saturday or Sunday. Okay, I better head off for now. Oh, I need to remember to phone the bank later. Um, 
because I don't know what the banks are like what you guys have. But if you make a large purchase uh, online through a place you don't usually buy from, uh, I mean, I could spend a fortune on Amazon and it wouldn't raise a wouldn't raise an eyelid. I know because in the past when I've been buying like computer components and the like hasn't been a problem at all. But if I buy from uh, Curry's, it's Curry's slash PC World, the place that's selling the television. If I buy from them, there is a chance that that'll get flagged. Uh, so I'll phone the bank up first and give them a heads up, just so it doesn't get flagged. Uh, I don't want them to stop doing it, just in case it does turn out to be a dodgy payment one day. But I also don't... It's also kind of embarrassing when you're trying to try to actually get through checkout, even though you are at home, so it's not as embarrassing as it could be in a shop. Uh, when you're trying to get through checkout, and you're like, crap, has this gone through? Do I need to do it again? Ah, well. I'll put them up first anyway. Okay, with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.